a lot of my PhD work looked at this and we looked at dry matter intake, we looked at reproductive events, um, as well as some treatment strategies for subclinical hypocalcemia diagnosed at four days in milk. And long story short, we consistently found that cows with low blood calcium, generally below 2.2 millimoles per liter, at that four days in milk, made less milk, they had reduced reproductive success, and they also consumed significantly less feed than cows that had low blood calcium only at one day in milk. So hello everyone, this is Luis Ferreira, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today we'll be discussing about hypocalcemia and to shed light into this very important topic, we have Dr. Clara Silly, uh, Assistant Professor at the University of New Hampshire. Uh, Clara, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm, I'm sure people will be really intrigued about everything that you bring to the table about this very important topic. But before we start our discussion, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, so like you mentioned, I'm an assistant professor here at the University of New Hampshire. I started, I joined the faculty here um, just over a year ago. And prior to that, I was at Cornell, uh, where I completed my PhD with Dr. Jess McCart in the um, vet school at Cornell, followed that by a quick postdoc before moving up here to UNH. My current position, um, I'm the precision dairy management specialist. However, that said, I'm still marrying my interests of dairy cow and uh, transition cow biology and physiology with precision technology. So how can we better manage transition cows using these available technologies such as rumen monitors, uh, you know, rumen boluses and what have you. Claire, uh, hypoglycemia is a topic that I, I'm, I'm going to say we study for decades, right? And, and, and obviously, uh, there is still a lot to learn. And, and, and I, I don't think we need to, uh, to tell people the importance, although very likely we have to discuss that as well. But thinking about what we know or what we knew a few years ago about hypocalcemia uh, compared to what we know today, what changed? <laughs> a lot has changed. And I will preface that by saying all of the work that I've done and that we'll talk about is on subclinical hypocalcemia. So obviously that adds a huge layer of complexity to the issue because these cows calve in, they're walking around, they're going to the feed bunk, they're going to the milk parlor, they appear fine. They're not down cows like we see with milk fever. They appear okay. However, as you mentioned, for decades now, we have been interested in the question of blood calcium in early lactation. What are the negative ramifications of cows with what we call subclinical hypocalcemia? And backing up, you know, 15, 10 years ago, a lot of the research coming out looking at subclinical hypocalcemia, largely diagnosed at one day or zero to 24 hours post calving using a variety of calcium cut points, the results were mixed. You know, some cows who were subclinically hypocalcemic went on to make a lot of milk. Others did not. Others had okay health problems or excuse me, health events. You know, they didn't have health problems. Others did. Repro was also a mixed bag. So over the past several years, we've really changed how we thought about subclinical hypocalcemia and led back to ask ourselves, you know, are we diagnosing this disorder at the correct time and are we using the correct cut point? For instance, with ketosis, you know, there's a lot of epidemiological evidence supporting that 1.2 uh, millimole per liter for blood BHB. We don't have that for blood calcium. Also, you know, further complicated by the fact we don't have a blood side calcium meter, but we'll get to that hopefully in a few years. But that said, um, in the past you know, five or so years, we've taken a step back and looked further at blood calcium dynamics in the early lactation period to see if we could flush out when is the appropriate time to take a blood sample to diagnose subclinical hypocalcemia and get consistent results in terms of health and production data. So with that, um, McCart and Nevis came out with a paper in 2020 where they dichotomized cows into four different subclinical hypocalcemic groups based on blood calcium at one and four days in milk. So either having high or low blood calcium at one day and high or low blood calcium at four days in milk. And from that, they found that cows that had low blood calcium at four days in milk 
which they deemed either persistent or delayed subclinical hypocalcemia, depending on what happened at one days in milk, those cows produced significantly less milk and were at greater likelihood of experiencing additional negative health events later into lactation. So with that in mind, we started to wonder, you know, is blood calcium at one day in milk such a bad thing? And should we be looking at four days in milk? So from there, a lot of my PhD work looked at this and we looked at dry matter intake, we looked at reproductive events, um, as well as some treatment strategies for subclinical hypocalcemia diagnosed at four days in milk. And long story short, we consistently found that cows with low blood calcium, generally below 2.2 millimoles per liter, at that four days in milk, made less milk, they had reduced reproductive success, and they also consumed significantly less feed than cows that had low blood calcium only at one day in milk. So a lot of information, but we really shifted our paradigm of moving away from that zero to 24 hour post calving subclinical hypocalcemia, this is when it's bad, to that's actually probably okay. And those cows are going to go on to be high producers. And when we see that delayed onset of subclinical hypocalcemia, you know, three, four days, that's when we really need to worry. Looking to maximize your herd's potential? Elevate performance with Kemen's cutting edge encapsulation technologies, including rumen protected choline, methionine, and lysine. Kemen's advanced choline and amino acid technologies ensure precise nutrient delivery, boosting milk yield and enhancing herd health. Trust Kemen, the experts in encapsulation, to take your herd to the next level. Learn more today at kemen.com forward slash dairy. I think that's key information because basically um, if you diagnose cows day one and they're not having any issues, it basically means that it was not done correctly, right? So, well, or, or let me rephrase that, right? It means that we, we didn't anticipate the problem correctly, right? Uh, but I guess uh, you mentioned some of the potential issues associated with intake, milk production, uh, some uh, reproductive uh, status. So tell us a little bit about the importance of that, specifically for those cows that uh, have issues with blood calcium levels on day four, which you just described to us that is the correct day to identify some of those cows. In terms of monetary outcomes and means that by which producers you know, stay in business, are cows that have reduced blood calcium at four days in milk consistently produce significantly less milk throughout their entire lactation compared to cows that have what we call transient subclinical hypocalcemia, so that drop in blood calcium at one day in milk but are fine by four days. Those cows are our rock stars. If every cow could be like that, that would be amazing. They make a ton of milk. They're great. We don't have to worry about them. But that reduction at four days in milk, those cows significantly produce less milk. They also are less likely to get pregnant. We did a uh, study where we looked at reproductive outcomes and the percent of cows pregnant uh, by 150 days in milk with what we're calling dyscalcemia, so low calcium at four days in milk, kind of changing the name a little bit too. They were significantly less likely to get pregnant by 150 days compared to their normal calcemic counterparts. And when we look a little deeper at intake, cows that had that low calcium at four days in milk consumed significantly less feed through the first three weeks of lactation as well. And you know, that may also contribute to the reduced milk production, other health events, what have you. But the interesting thing there is those cows that consumed less milk, had lower blood calcium at four days in milk their intake prepartum was exactly the same as the cows who would go on to be transiently subclinically hypocalcemic or normal calcemic experiencing very little reduction in blood calcium. So that's where things get really interesting and lead us to believe, you know, something is going on in those first few days that just puts that cow out of whack and her calcium metabolism and homeostasis is just not where we want it to be. I think that's really interesting information because, well, basically a lot of times we rely on pre and intake to start tracking cows on farm and try to find those cows that will have some of the metabolic disorders early on during the transition period. So Clara, thank you so much for all this information. Obviously, we have a lot more to cover uh, for people at home. Clara will be back with the second episode uh, related to subclinical hypocalcemia in dairy cows. 
Uh, thanks for attending the podcast today, and I hope to see you soon.